Hello friends, welcome back. I've adjusted my sound, so hopefully this is loud enough for you all. I don't know what happened in my last video. I have a lot of information to get through today. I had to reorganise my tabs because obviously my last message, there was way too much that I wanted to share and I couldn't get through it all. So as much as I want to get to the scriptures, because those are the most important information that I can share with you to understand what's happening right now. I need to also go through this other stuff that I need to get through to today. I did mention in a comment, because somebody responded to a comment, what about the IDF's lack of preparedness when the October 7 attacks happened? There are other people who are investigating this, researching this. I'm going to point you in their direction. For example, on I-24 news website there's this article you are free to read it decoding disaster the psychological side of the october 7th intelligence failure these are definitely worth reading and there's so many people speculating as to why was israel not prepared and why is it that there are rumors going around that israel was informed of hamas preparing and plotting this kind of attack for a couple of years and why was the um, IDF, Israel, why was their intelligence not taking it seriously? In the wake of October 7th tragedy that claimed the lives of over a thousand Israelis, predominantly civilians, at the hands of Hamas terrorists, questions about the profound intelligence failure continued to reverberate within Israel's discourse. There's a particular concern about those men who were in charge of the military, in charge of the information that they are responsible to act upon once they find out what the threat is. In fact, I'll just read this portion. I'm giving you the headlines because, as you can see, I have a lot to get through today. More important things. An intelligence chief who publicly rejects the government's characterization of a war, whose poor professional judgment led to a catastrophe and who has a history of contemptuous and insubordination, simply cannot be trusted. Him. He's got to go. There's cause for his resignation. In fact, Carolyn Glick on the Jewish News Syndicate YouTube channel has done a very good expose on this do you want me to play some of it okay let me do that i'm in four minutes <clears throat> i recommend you listen to the whole video decided no 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 that's insensitive that's wrong and he ordered our forces to erase it and so we've seen these signs being erased with white paint because they got an order from hires what it really tells us is that finkelman has to go he has to go now, there are two generals, and I'm going to talk about both of them now. Finkelman, who's in charge of Southern Command, which includes Gaza, obviously, and Aaron Khaliwa, the head of uh, Military Intelligence Directorate. Both of them have really uh, been perhaps the most obvious reasons, the most obvious responsible parties for Israel not preventing the October 7th invasion. And since October 7th, or immediately after October 7th, this consensus formed that we really don't want to take any personal action against anybody. We just have to let everybody do their job, whether it's, you know, line soldiers, battalion commanders, brigade commanders, or members of the general staff. We don't want to do an investigation. We have to do a major investigation into how it happened, that we were so unprepared, that we were caught unawares on October 7th, and Hamas was able to invade Israel in 60 different port points along the security fence and enter over 20 communities and bases simultaneously, practically, and conduct the slaughter and the torture and the kidnapping that it did and get away with it and get back to Gaza with 240 hostages. So we said, okay, look, we're in a war now. You go to war with the army you have, with the generals you have, and then you deal with it afterwards because we have to win. Okay, that makes sense, except that in the case of these two generals in particular, 
it's not necessarily possible to win the war with them remaining in their posts. And I'll now, again, find her video. You can continue to watch the rest of it. JNS TV, and this was posted 13 days ago. Really important what she has to share. Let me turn the volume down in case it starts to play on its own. I'm going to close that window. There are more articles written about it. Again, I'm not going to speculate. What I am consider going to consider in today's message is the fact that there is an intense hatred for the Jews. And this is what it comes down to, friends. The Jews are known for what? Being the people of God, the chosen land, the chosen people. So we are not stupid and we are not without discernment. We know exactly why the enemy is targeting these specific people groups throughout their history, you guys. Military Intelligence Directorate, head to resign. All right, he takes responsibility. The night after the attack, he was excluded from the conversation between the generals and the chief of staff and was only updated afterward. I'm going to go through some of what I have, giving you as much as I can, but just to, we need to zoom out again, like I said, zoom out, see the bigger picture. Recently, <clears throat> earlier this year, Saudi Arabia, our ally or our perfidious ally, deceptive, can we trust Saudi Arabia, calls for a new 9-11 investigation to find out. There is so much pointing in this direction of Saudi Arabia, the US ally, being guilty of being a part of the inside job. I mean, I think there's a consensus that we know that this was definitely an insidious, wicked conspiracy to do what they did, but it did not happen without Saudi Arabia, not Israel. That ludicrous conspiracy because when you do the research and you find out and you follow the money and you actually go by that trail it leads you to the Arabs who's got more invested in this the Islamic world of course and if you've been listening to my videos for any length of time we talk about the beast the Antichrist because the Bible the Holy Scriptures warn about the end times, they provide a lot of information for us and they highlight a region on the world map and that region is the Middle East. All the nations that surround Israel today are centre focus of end times Bible prophecy. The harlot or mystery Babylon the Great is mentioned in the book of Revelation. I believe and many others do who study the word of God believe that this is the region of the harlot mystery babylon the great i've got tons of videos on that please check it out in fact before i forget i've got a playlist on my channel this playlist on my youtube channel please remember i have a lot of information a lot of content since i've been on this platform providing you with a lot of information with scriptures backing it up with evidence i do my homework this playlist remember to watch it because it's going to be connected to my message today the appearance of mahdi dajjal antichrist there's several other videos i've got on this as well but this is a particular playlist there are five videos here and especially if you're new to my channel please listen there are those who think they're listening to my videos, but they're not. It's going in one ear, it's coming out the other. I get asked the same questions repeatedly when I've addressed them so many times. Part 1, Part 2. The People of the Covenant, another very important video. I talked about the Pact of Umar during the time of the Islamic Caliphates. And how the people of the book, i.e. the Jews and the Christians, were brought under subjugation, under domination, by a covenant. And those peoples that were subdued, brought under, to, under subjection, the Christians and the Jews, were called 
the people of the covenant. The covenant was the pact of Omar, the peace treaty that allowed them to live, the Jews and Christians to live, provided they paid a protection tax, also known as the jizya. So, Saudi Arabia. Since then, the public has learned much more about what happened. Basic dots have been connected to the point that our new knowledge has profound geopolitical implications for the United States. The essential question, is Saudi Arabia our ally? Or as former Senator Bob Graham has repeatedly said, our perfidious ally, deceptive. Accompanying that new knowledge have come fresh calls for a new public investigation to build on what the 9-11 Commission began and doubts and despairs about the will of our leaders to get to the truth and the major news media to pay attention, which is not going to happen. Our nations in the West have been bought with money by the Arabs. They are all implicated. Our education institutions... Insti uh, tuition of terror, Qatari money flowed into US universities and now it's fueling violence. This is what I'm saying. There's too much at stake now. It's little too late to turn the tide. The infiltration of Islamic Arabian money, not Jewish Israeli lobby, but the Arab lobby, has permeated Western society. And it goes straight to the education institutions where they meant to educate and indoctrinate and inform their young minds. Since 9-11 attacks, Qatar has become the largest foreign donor to American academia, which was not always bothered to reveal the source. Qatar, Muslim Brotherhood. A study by the Institute for Antisemitism Studies found a direct link between the amount of donations and the presence of pro-Palestinian groups on campuses. <clears throat> Let me just uh, type something out. I just want to get it out of the way with. It's on my phone. The evil of anti-Semitism and anti-Israeli, anti-Jewish, anti-America, anti-Western and anti-Christian sentiment is spreading. Yes, I've warned about this wiki time that is coming and is here. Please see my old videos, watch them again if you have seen them before. The enemy's minions will use this Israeli Palestinian conflict to incite their jihad. I've been warning about this time. So far, we are on track. I mentioned this very situation in previous videos. I've been showing you the Palestinian campaign and how it's gaining world support, world attention, the woke leftist Marxist ideology that is indoctrinating the younger generation in our world, in the Western world, is all a part of a bigger picture in order to declare jihad against Israel, to isolate it. This is your, it's like your malignant narcissism on a global scale. Do you understand? I may have to do a separate video about that so you understand the dynamic, the psychological dynamic of what we're seeing. This is malignant narcissism on a grand scale. This is a very campaign that is going to speed up the invasion of Jerusalem, friends. And we know that's going to happen. The word of God has told us, right? Seeing all the news, the footage of the witnesses speak of their horror of October the 7th. It's hard not to feel traumatised, despair, sorrow and intense grief and anger at the lawlessness and the level of unrighteousness we are seeing today. Calling wicked good and good evil. And if you're feeling the same, know that, that this is what marks us out as the people of God. We have the mark of the Holy Spirit. We are grieving for what's taking place all over the world. The hatred against the Jews is demonic and illogical, other than to say it's purely satanic. There is no place now that the Jews feel safe. Again, so it's come full circle. 
A deep darkness can be seen spreading over the earth and now is the time to shine the light, people of God. So is this Jacob's trouble around the corner? I would say yes, it's around the corner and I will go to those verses as I get along with these tabs. Until three weeks ago, this issue was of no particular interest to anyone because it was in the darkness, behind the scenes, under the radar. The money flowed <clears throat> through the usual channels under the surface without any hindrance. We're not talking about the flow of Qatari money to the Gaza Strip, but to another less predictable destination, American Academia. Muslim Brotherhood, remember, is a political Islamist ideology. It's a, an outfit. <clears throat> it's a political outfit that seeks to influence governments worldwide. It's banned in most places in the Middle East, including Egypt. Other groups like Hizbut Tahrir that were banned, that were underground, are coming back up in the onto the surface in um, the UK, in Great Britain. Remember, Hizbut Tahrir was one of the organisations I went undercover to monitor for a, for a season to see for myself what is being said there. And I'm telling you now, these people have been working tirelessly for this time right now. This is why you're seeing the Muslims in the West gloating, boasting, bragging, celebrating, because they really feel that this Hamas attack on Israel, October the 7th, was a wonderful thing. It's a landmark in their history, in their struggle, their intifada against the Jews. They've achieved much gains. Right. So they're celebrating it. It's just, this hasn't just happened out of the blue, right? <clears throat> According to a study published in 2022 by the National Association of Academics in the US, a study that did not cause too much noise at the time in the period between 2001-2021, precisely after, look at the date, the timeline, who was benefiting from 9-11? I'll tell you one thing. It was Islam. And at the time, when we saw, we heard about the Muslims in the Middle East, wherever they were, on public footage, celebrating it. How are you going to tell me that, that it was the Jews behind it? What's the benefit, can I ask you? Is it because Israel has a greater Israel project? No, 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 no. But that's not what we see, is it? Where's my map? Is that what we see with our God-given eyes? The expansion of the Greater Israel Project? I'm asking you an honest question. Excuse the sarcasm. What do your eyes see? This isn't about this blue speck over here. That to indicate it blue for the state of Israel. It's not about that. It's about what the Bible said it is about. It's the final beast, the Islamic Antichrist. So, precisely after September 11 attacks, the Qataris donated a whooping $4.7 billion to universities. Why? The institutions of education to do what? Think. Use your God-given brain to indoctrinate for this time that we are seeing right now. It only took two decades, you guys. It didn't take a long time. The recipients, however, did not report part of the money received as required by law. Qatar and Turkey are both considered primary backers of the Muslim Brotherhood. That's why Turkey is the most vocal, the most 
I mean, the terrorist himself, Erdogan, is speaking out against terrorism of Israel? Qatar and Turkey are both considered primary backers of the Muslim Brotherhood. Do you remember the Arab Spring not so long ago? That was a movement of the Muslim Brotherhood fueled in the further against what they call puppet leaders in the Islamic world. That's why they went after Egypt first. Hamas is a militant Islamist terrorist and Palestinian nationalist organisation that was founded in 87. Hamas is a splinter faction of the Muslim Brotherhood. So you could say it's the Muslim Brotherhood being funded by Qatar that is funding our universities in the US. So is it any wonder that we're seeing these protests? In fact, let me go to my uh, Twitter page. <clears throat> is it any wonder that we're seeing let's play this clip here I'm sure you've seen it already Member of Parliament Hassan Bismet spoke out strongly against Israel and shouted about Israeli suffering the wrath of Allah seconds later he had a heart attack does anyone know what became of him afterward Allah'ın gazabından kurtulamayacaksınız hepinizi saygıyla selamlıyorum This is why you're seeing <clears throat> all these protesters who are so so blind and just ignorant. Only 47% of surveyed students who embraced the slogan from the river to the sea were able to name the river and the sea. The ignorance, it doesn't matter if you're being indoctrinated, those are just irrelevant details. Actor David Schwimmer has blasted the inaction of prestigious US universities against cause of genocide against Jews, saying silence is silencing complicity. These morally bankrupt presidents testify before Congress, incapable of answering even the most direct yes or no questions. I'm trying to find, I mean, you've seen them, you know what kind of footages we're talking about. What's this going on here? What's going on? Are you going to talk about it? You'd rather just wave the flag? What are you guys doing? October 7th is a game changer for Israel and for the entire world. Oh, so Israel attacks the hospital? No, Israel attacks Hamas, and Hamas hides behind hospitals. Alright, did they attack the hospital? What no, they, they attack the mosque, but the hospital's there, so they have very few options of getting them out of there. It seems somewhat twisted. Yeah, you so, seem a little twisted. Well, I'm not Safar, I'm someone different. Yeah, alright. So, you know so, so far, your questions seem a little twisted to me. I told you about that. kidnapped babies, and you haven't said much about that. You want to talk about the kidnapped babies? Do you know that I'm a person in this world that's pretty big and prominent? I don't care. You don't know shit. Are you sure? I can have people down there soon. Yeah, go ahead. Make my day, buddy. Get the fuck out of here. Guess what? Yeah. Fuck you. you think you got money because you're from Jewish land? Yeah, go ahead. Let's hear it. Do you it. think you got money? There we go. Here we go. Let's hear it. Do you think you got money? Ethiopia actually has much more money than you. I have more money than you. Yeah? I do. Oh, well, you're still pretty stupid. Do you want me to come upstairs? Make a move. I'm Do you want to talk to me more? Do you want to talk to me? Do you want to talk to me more? Do you want to talk to me? Do you want to talk to me more? I'll stand strong and I'm around. So if yeah. There's ever a fight, I'm, uh, I'll jump in. I mean, to attack you. Yeah, I'm paying now. But I will kill you. You make a move in my face, I'm going to fuck you. Now, what are you going to do? You're you're not really, you're not really what God expected of Israel. Yeah. That's why I moved to Judah, Ethiopia. Yeah. You know that. I'm Rastafari. Yeah. You're a punk. He called, he swore that he would hit me if I put something in his face. He did, he speaks to Israel like it's the... You're a little bitch. He speaks to Israel, for people of Israel, like it's the pinnacle of the world. However, when I approached him, he did nothing. You're a coward. You're a bitch. Are yeah. you an American? Yeah, yeah. No, you're not. You're an American Taliban. Did you kill Jesus? I know you did. I said. You know, the moment I've noticed, 
at the moment, some of these Jews or these Israelis or Americans, whoever it is, the moment they start taking back a little bit of ground because they're pushed into a corner, they're being threatened with violence. The whole world goes bonkers, but they say nothing about the chance for genocide, intifada, global intifada, and yet that's acceptable. There's footages of the Palestinian flags flying over in countries in the West, in the USA and in Great Britain. But the people who say, this isn't right, what's going on here? The only flag that should be flying in my country is my flag. But yet they're told that they're being far right, that they're being hateful. Let's see what happened with the rest of that. You're a Judas. I'm broken. Yeah, yeah, I feel broken, but long live Israel! And notice he's on his own. Other people are too afraid to go stand with him, right? Can I, can I take, take a picture of both of you? Hold it. Okay, Just ready? Hold it. Nice and high. Cool. Nice and high. Ready? One, two, three. It's so perfect. We're gonna look here. Give me the guy. Good one. Attention! Attention! So this guy goes to Harvard to protest against the president, Claudine Gay. You see in the videos about that. An anti-Semitic man from the Rastafari community appeared and started an argument. He left after saying that Ethiopia has much more money than Israel anyway. Well, we know he was anti-Semitic because it didn't take long for him to accuse that guy of killing Jesus. Traitors to this great school and need to resign this great school. Claudine Gray is a traitor. Resign now. How much money is Qatar paying Claudine Gray? How? Oh. For the most part, when there's no mob, they lose their courage. I'm going to move on. It's a rabbit trail, friends. So, okay, where was I? Muslim Brotherhood. Well, so we know where the money's coming from. This is a political ideology. And they have a lot of money. I mean, we know how much money the Hamas leaders make. I didn't bring up those stats, but you can find them. They're all over the place on the internet. You know that they live in luxury. And they don't live in luxury inside Gaza. No, they leave the people of Gaza to deal with the aftermath of their attacks against Israel when Israel response now this article I wanted to read I had it prepared but as you can see it's asking me to subscribe how many websites can I subscribe to friends another rumor that was going around and is still currently being spread falsely it's a false accusation you know it's just, it's just so ludicrous it doesn't take a lot of time to research a lot of these accusations to only find out that they're load of nonsense oh just Seriously, people. Apparently, Israel is disproportionately bombing Gaza because Gaza has a lot of gas. <clears throat> yeah, you probably heard of it. On social media, Israel... Let's see if I can read it without losing this page. On social media, Israel has been accused of bombing the enclave to seize an offshore gas field. This geostrategic interpretation is far from reality. Oh, I think we can read some more. <laughs> Using the same argument, C.J. Wellman, an Australian commentator with 170,000 followers on YouTube, described the words genocide motivated purely by greed and profit. Richard Medest, oh my goodness, no way, really? This dude is such a loser. He is so bitter, so anti-Jew. He claims to be a Christian. 
he's anything but a Christian because he obviously doesn't read the Bible because if you read the word of God and you understand what God has planned for the land of Israel and for the people there's no way you could be preaching the kind of nonsense that Richard Medhurst preaches. Richard Medhurst, who presents himself as a Syrian British journalist, sees the war as part of a broader Western plan to promote Israeli gas exports. He's since been demonetized on YouTube for his blatant anti Jewish rhetoric and he's crying and whining. YouTube has demonetized me. Here, here's my PayPal link. Here's this link. It's all about money for these people. Independent journalism, really. Why is it that when we research, your allegations, they're found to be false. He sees the war as a part of a broader Western plan to promote Israeli gas exports through the new India, Middle East, Europe economic corridor. I showed you that map in my last video, which runs from India through the Gulf and Israel to Europe, all the while cutting off Russian, Iranian, Arab gas from the international market, he added. In a video that got 120. 5,000 likes on Instagram. He's all over the place. And that's exactly why they're in Gaza slaughtering Palestinians. I thought Israel was in Gaza because Hamas attacked Israeli citizens on October the 7th. Which was live streamed by their own videos, their own phones and even the phones of the civilians who they were slaughtering, massacring, using their own phones and they were on their social media, on Facebook, streaming it. They sent messages to the families of the civilians using their own phones of what atrocities that they were committing. Well, let's all forget about that. This is what I'm talking about. Malignant narcissism on a global scale. But these theories, in addition to being full of dubious interpretations, pose a serious problem. They explain a complex, multifaceted war solely through the geostrategic prism. Yet even this geopolitical argument doesn't hold. Here's why. It talks about, well, what is it worth? These estimates far exceed the needs of the Palestine territories in energy. They represent a bonanza of $700 to $800 million a year, according to the calculations of Palestinian economists. Let me go through this. I've got so much more to get through. But on June... 18, 2023, Israel reversed its position giving its preliminary consent to an agreement to develop the Gaza Marine between the PA and an Egyptian consortium. I can imagine the reason why they were doing that because they know all the money, all the aid money that goes to the Palestinians in Gaza doesn't get to the Gazans. Who does it go to? It goes to the Hamas leaders which includes the Egyptian state gas company. Israeli Prime Minister nevertheless stated that progress on this issue would deepen the pres preserving of the state of Israel's security and diplomatic needs. It's always about security for Israel. Do you blame them? It's illogical to believe that after 20 years of objection, Tel Aviv finally approved the development of the field only to bomb Gaza four months later just to get its hands on it. Anyhow, it goes into some details about what is it worth israel produced 21.29 billion cubic meters of gas of which 9.21 billion cubic meters were exported to egypt and jordan israel hopes to double its production over the next few years and enter new markets particularly in europe these reservoirs in the country are currently operational i spoke about this two years ago tamar leviathan and karish a new reservoir, Olympus, was discovered in 2022. The massive Leviathan field, Tamar, which Turkey wants its hands on, are Israel's main gas resources. By comparison, the potential revenues from Gaza Marine, 32 billion cubic metres, are extremely minimal. If Gaza Marine were to be seized by Israel, its development would have no significant impact on the country's energy independence or its export plans. If productive, which it is not, Gaza Marine would produce about 2% of what is currently being produced from Tamar Leviathan. In other words, Gaza Marine is not something Israel finds worth going to war over. 
especially considering that the war threatens is much larger pre-existing projects. Are you interested in reading all of it? I can put it in the comments afterward. I mentioned the Arab Spring. Do you remember what that was all about? Muslim Brotherhood. It's like what we're seeing happen, and it's mostly in the West, by the way. We're thinking that this is a global, worldwide support for the pro-Palestinian, pro-Hamas campaign. It's not worldwide, no. It's mostly in the West. But 10 years ago, revolts spread like wildfire across the Arab world, spurring events that changed the region. I'm bringing this to your memory so you recognise the pattern. It's the Muslim Brotherhood fueled overthrow of Western democracy and it's been happening through their money. It's taken two decades for it to get here. The protests inspired a wave of revolts across the Arab world as people rose up to protest against authoritarianism, corruption and poverty. That was allegedly what they were against, right? On January, this is back in 2011, thousands of Egyptians marched in Cairo demanding the departure of Hosni Mubarak and guess who came in after him? who had been in power for 30 years. In February 11, more than a million took to the streets. Mubarak resigned and handed control to the military. They want to do something similar in the West, believe it or not. The Muslim Brotherhood-linked government of Mohamed Morsi, Muslim Brotherhood dude, was elected in 2012, but was overthrown the following year by the military led by the general, who is still now the president. Abdel Fattah Sisi, right? Do you also remember what happened to the American journalist who covered it? Lara Logan. It's a long, very disturbing testimonial of when Lara Logan, the journalist of CBS News, how she was attacked by a mob of pervert, perverts. I'll have to play some of it, honestly, because some of you don't remember this. It's important to remember what kind of people we're talking about here. These were Egyptians in Egypt, men predominantly in the protests, she being a journalist, blonde, blue-eyed, which is what they go after. Check out my resources if you don't believe me. In fact, do your own research and check it out. That's what they do. They did this during the... Um, the caliphates during the time of the invasions of uh, Europe, they took blonde-haired, blue-eyed women and made them their sex slaves. You have to dig a little, a, bit, a little bit more to get that information online. Let me play a little clip. This is what happened February 11th, the Egyptian dictatorship of Hosni Mubarak was falling. More than 100,000 people filled Cairo's Tahrir Square in wild celebration. Among... In wild celebration. This is the mindset. And you've got to understand it from a spiritual perspective. This is demonic. There's no other way to put it. It's purely demonic. It's the spirit and it's taking over people. Why? Because they don't love the truth. And the Lord always says that. He rewards those who diligently seek him. And he rewards those who diligently seek the truth. These people think they have the truth. But they don't want the truth. So they're going to be given over to a deception, a delusional spirit, a murderous spirit. And this poor girl was on the receiving end of it. Among those in the crowd was our 60 Minutes colleague, correspondent Laura Logan. Laura, a native of South Africa, is an experienced war reporter, but Tahrir Square became her most hazardous assignment. During the revolution, dozens of reporters were assaulted, often by agents of the regime. The night of the 11th, a mob turned on Laura and her 60 Minutes team and singled her out in a violent sexual assault. Since then, Laura has been recuperating with her husband and two children. Now, she's returning to work and she's decided to tell the story of what happened just once here on our broadcast. 
She's speaking out, she tells us, to add her voice to those who confront sexual violence, to break what she calls the code of silence. Laura Logan arrived in Cairo at a moment of triumph for Egypt. She didn't imagine in the hours mm. before midnight she would be fighting for her life. Imagine telling Laura Logan that she deserved it. She deserved what happened to her. This was just resistance against her oppression of just simply reporting on what was taking place during the protest. This is the same mindset that we're seeing today. People are demanding evidence, they're dismissive, they're gaslighting the victims and even the hostages, Israeli hostages, foreign hostages are kept in Gaza. The world is turning a blind eye and a deaf ear to their cries. People are blaming the victim. Nothing's changed, friends. The story will continue in a moment. When we drove from the airport into Cairo that night, moments after Mubarak had stepped down, it was unbelievable. It was like unleashing a champagne cork on Egypt. I'm anxious to get to the square. I got to be there because this is a moment in history that you don't want to miss. What does it look like? It looks like a party. It's a roar of sound because everyone's so excited and they're singing songs of the revolution and they're shouting slogans. And everybody's you know, very physical. So you're being jostled and pushed and sometimes people get closer and my guys are very protective. It's, you know, they want to keep people at bay. It was impossible not to get caught up in the moment, which was a real moment of celebration. I'm going to move it along a little bit to where she talks about, I'm not sure at what part it was, but uh, let me just skip it there. I will. You know, he, he was looking at me and I could see his face and we had a sea of people between us, obviously. She's talking about her bodyguard or her co-journalist. They were together, obviously, in the crowd, but they were separated because they, the thugs... The perverts attacked her in the middle of her reporting. Staring at both of us, beating us. I didn't, I didn't even know that they were beating me with um, flagpoles and sticks and things because I couldn't even feel that. Because I think of the, of the sexual assault was all I could feel was their hands raping me over and over and over again. Raping you with their hands. Yeah. Nonstop. Oh, from through the this front, whole time. from the back, and um, I didn't know if I could hold on to Ray. I'm holding on to him. I didn't want to let go of him. <laughs> I thought I was going to die if I lost hold of him. But in that moment, Ray, a former Special Forces soldier, was torn away. When I lost Ray, I thought that was the end. It was like all the adrenaline left my body. Because I knew in his face, when he lost me, he thought he'd, I was going to die. That they were tearing my body in every direction at this point, tearing my muscles, and they were trying to tear off chunks of my scalp. They had my head in different directions. Pulling at your hair. Oh yeah, and not, not trying to pull out my hair, holding big wads of it, trying to, literally trying to tear my scalp off my skull. And I thought, uh, when I thought, I'm going to die here, and my next thought was, I can't believe I just, I just let them kill me. That that was, that was as much fight as I had, that I just gave in, and I gave up on my children so easily. How could you do that? Your daughter and your son are one and two years old. <clears throat> I had to fight for them, and that's when I said, okay, it's about staying alive now. I have to just surrender to the sexual assault. The, what more can they do now? They're inside you, everywhere. So the only thing to fight for, left to fight for, was my life. It was a fight she endured about 25 minutes. It's so disturbing, friends. But this is what they do. This is what is happening. And this is what is being celebrated. The same behavior 
the same exact behavior, even worse than what Laura Logan went through, is what the citizens in Israel experienced. Ten times worse, friends. But yet people want evidence. No one's going to believe them. There's only a handful of us who believe the atrocities that were committed. I thought that was important to share with you so you don't forget. People forget history so quickly. Turkey, at the time, Erdogan slammed Egypt's tyrants. He called them tyrants as thousands mourned mercy. So the military took over Egypt, right? Kicked all the protesters out. They tried to control and contain. Erdogan, the Muslim Brotherhood guy, like Obama, slammed Egypt's tyrants as thousands more in mercy. Mosques across Turkey held prayer services for former Egyptian president who died in a Cairo court on Monday. Erdogan attended prayer service in Istanbul for the former president, he lasted one year, Morsi, who collapsed and died during a court session in Cairo. Turkey's religious authority, the Dianet, had called for absentee funeral prayers to be held. At Istanbul's faith mosque, where thousands joined in prayers, Erdogan called Morsi a martyr and blamed Egypt's tyrants for his death, adding that he doesn't believe Morsi died of natural causes. And then not long after that, you had the Jamal Khashoggi incident between this tension building between Saudi Arabia and Turkey. But another link to the Muslim Brotherhood, and I mentioned this video, I think it was three years ago now. How long ago was it? When the Antifa, Black Lives Matter rights were taking off, right? I shared with you this clip. I was doing my research and I noticed something really weird about the Antifa BLM riots. What did I notice? the Arab Spring riots. It's the same pattern, the same nature. Lo and behold, the guy mentioned in this video, let's see if it's named in here. I forget his name. Oh my goodness, is it Naid? Of the Council of American Islamic Relations. You can Google him, he's online. He's probably, let me see if I can, just to show you what I'm talking about. Uh, let me type in care. Not banned. What's his name? Is it Nahid? <clears throat> I'm trying to find his name. Yeah, it was him. Nahid and care have been at this a long time. Ilan Omar for Speaker of the House. Nahid Awad, the ca card-carrying Muslim Brotherhood brother, this guy here, Nihad Awad, Nihad Awad, I spelled his name wrong, I just want to show you, Nihad Awad, I'm going to play this clip. Memory on Twitter, Executive Director of CARE, American Civil Liberties Outfit, apparently. I was happy to see the people of Gaza break the siege on October the 7th. They were victorious. The people of Gaza have the right to self-defense. Israel does not. And this is the mantra of majority of the pro-Hamas, pro-Palestinian campaign people including my own family, including you, Saima. After 75 years, they're fighting resistance, right? Only decided to break the siege, the walls of the concentration camp on October 7th. Yeah, we've seen a beautiful holiday destination, tourist resort, you have to look up the photos online of the concentration camp that is not in Gaza. And yes, I was happy to see people breaking the siege and throwing down the shackles of their own land and walk free into their lands that they were not allowed 
to walk in. Do you know there were thousands upon, I don't know how many thousands, Israel honestly never learned its lesson. Israel, using this soft approach, thinking that they could change the nature, the mindset of the Gazans by offering them carrots upon carrots. They allowed thousands of Gazans into Israel on employment. These people came in working and got paid for jobs. Not anymore. The foolish Israeli government thinks that they can still hope for some sort of peace with these people who live and breed death and destruction back to them. For all of their efforts, this is what they got in return. Walk free into their land. What a load of nonsense. Lies, I tell you. Lies. Nothing but lies. In. Not only that, the people who they slaughtered in, God, in um, Israel were the people on the far left, the far left Israelis, were the people who befriended the Gazans, gave them jobs to work in their own kibbutz communities, and those same people, Gazans, betrayed them this is what these people are like are you blind you can't see the difference and yes the people of gaza have the right to self-defense have the right to defend themselves and yes israel as an occupying power does not have that right to self-defense israel was not occupying gaza from 2005 it was left over to you people. And look what you made out of it. You used all the money from goodwilled Western nations who had pity on you. You took all that money and you built terror tunnels. That's what you've got to show for it. Gaza became the liberation source. The inspiration for people. And he's not lying there. Gaza has become the inspirational source. It's true. It's this people, how they've manipulated this whole thing about the Palestinians being without a homeland, how it's been manipulated and the people have been used as pawns, is what is launching this global jihad, including the woke generation. Yeah. Do you see that? Because the woke generation have no understanding of the Holocaust. It's no longer taught in schools. Nobody talks about the Islamic caliphates and their Holocaust and their genocide, especially against the Armenians. None of this is taught in history. It's only one-sided propaganda that these people, Muslim Brotherhood, Qatari folks, are paying to be taught in our universities. Gaza transformed many minds around the world. Brainwashed. Including people who are not Muslim. The leftist woke, Marxist, secularists, the humanists, which is a curse on the West, creating a vacuum because there's nothing of substance to be gained by secularism and humanism. There's nothing left that gives you any substance so you create this vacuum because we shun christianity we do away with jesus we mock him ridicule him poke fun you create a vacuum because of humanism secularism and the younger generation not being taught history <clears throat> they're being taught one-sided history <clears throat> revisionist history and what do you expect this is a cocktail that's going to breed a disaster and it's going to come back to bite us on the bum what kind of faith these people have <coughs> they are thankful they're not afraid and israel did not scare them because they knew that their heaven is in gaza what is he talking about the heaven is in gaza martyrdom jihadist martyrdom he's promising the islamic heaven with their 72 virgins for the men i don't know what the women get if you're a muslim woman can you give me some information as to what is heaven for you as a muslim woman what do you get 
Because we know what your men get. The perverts. He's brainwashing a generation of Western youth to become martyrs. So don't be surprised when you start to see your kids begin to take the Shahada, the Islamic creed, when they convert to Islam. Don't be surprised, you guys, because that's what happened after 9-11. The same dynamic, the same symptoms of this disease, the same thing is going to happen again, but on a bigger scale. And they, if they would like to die, they, they will go to another heaven. There you go. This is exactly what they want. They want you to offer up yourselves to become martyrs, suicide bombers. Like I said, a very difficult time is coming for the West. They haven't got a clue what's coming. That is the fate of the people of G Martyrdom, bloodshed, jihadist mindset, people of genocide who want genocide, nothing but genocide. If you see the videos of their poor children who were born, I mean, there's videos I've seen. I'm not going to go through it all right now because I have so much more to get through. If you can look and see all these tabs that I've got open, let's see how I go. There are videos of these Palestinians in Gaza when they have their babies, they dedicate them to jihad, to become martyrs. It's a glorious ambition for them. You can't fight this with weapons. This is why it's only going to be Jesus who's going to come and destroy this beast. It is a beast. And people are offended. Oh, they'll be calling them the people of darkness. Children of the devil. Well, what do you call this? Are these children of light? Are these children of light? Spreading light everywhere. Are these angels in disguise, perhaps? Gaza. And that's why Gaza and the people of Gaza were able to transform everyone who's watching. They have learned from these people. And those who felt bad for Gaza, they don't understand the equation. Those who thought that the Gazans are less than those who can <coughs> help them they are mistaken. Oh, yeah. They are mistaken. Terribly the mistaken. The Gazans were the victorious. Disgusting. Anyway, so I've got to show, show you. Who he is and why he was fired after that. But this is him back in the days where the Black Lives Matter riots were kicking off everywhere in the West. He hijacked that and he made it personal. Listen to what he said. That you are powerful. You can make a whole difference in 2016. <coughs> you can change the reality of our time. This is the time for us as American Muslims to be in the front, not to retreat. Because all of you are leaders. Your votes are your negotiating power in the year 2016. Turn your centers, Islamic centers, mosques, into registration centers for voters. Black Lives Matter is our matter. Black Lives Matter is our campaign. Basically, you are the new black people of America. If we don't stand, you will see Muslims murdered in the streets. We are the community that staged a revolution across the world. If She's talking about the Arab Spring, right? If we could do that, why can't we have that revolution in America? <laughs> and that is what they're doing, you guys. This is an Islamic revolution. Don't get confused with what the narrative is out there trying to tell you. Turkey's in Geo Network in America. Oh, look, what else? Are you connecting the dots? It's the Muslim Brotherhood, friends. Like I said in older videos, consider the Muslim Brotherhood as the political, <clears throat> the political apparatus of the Antichrist beast. Remember, it's a political beast, military, economic, spiritual, murderous beast. It's a system. 
The Islamist government of Turkey is spreading its influence on US soil through a network of non-governmental organisations. I thought it was the Jews, you guys. What benefit? Is it that the Jews who are supposed to be controlling the world and have the whole world turn against them? They're not doing their job, are they? What do you say? excuse me including and it's not just on the US friends if it's happening here it's happening in the UK in fact the UK is full of Arabian money so now Turkey joins in including charities mosques political action committees of course that is how you change nations you infiltrate governments. You know, we hear about all these conspiracy of Mein Kampf, for example. And when you research it, there's no evidence. There's nothing to back it up. It's just hearsay. But when you look into this, you find there's evidence of Islamic nations and these jihadist Islamist outfits infiltrating the West. You actually find the evidence of them doing it. And ideological allies of the Muslim Brotherhood. Some of these entities have even received hundreds of thousands of dollars of taxpayer money, even though some of them are likely required to register as foreign agents under the Foreign Agent Registration Act. While Turkey is a NATO member and is therefore ostensibly an ally, an ally <clears throat> Oh, here we go. <clears throat> the ruling authoritarian regime of Erdogan is a promoter of Islamist extremism. Israeli media is particular, in particular has accused Erdogan of providing support to Hamas, a group that he says is not a terrorist organisation, but a resistance movement fighting for liberation. This is the nonsense of this malignant narcissism around the world. It's, it's making people fall for the lies. The victim is always to blame. And what these people do is always justified. right? Because they're provoked. You provoked me. Rather, it is the state of Israel who declares that is a terrorist. You violated me. I'm just responding. Time, among others, has also noted the friendly relations between Hamas, Erdogan and Turkey. I think the writing's on the wall. The system of the Antichrist is here. We are to watch out for the Ten Kings. I've got so much more to get through. I might have to do another video. Another video. I don't want to find myself rushing through important information to show you the bigger picture just because it's going to take me a long time to upload this video on Rumble. You know that. It takes hours. That first video I uploaded, friends, it took over four hours. I don't know why. I don't understand. Anyway, Turkey supports the Muslim Brotherhood, of which Hamas is the Palestinian branch. The government is also accused of aiding Al-Qaeda-linked terrorists in Syria. More broadly... Erdogan has an Islamist infrastructure around the globe that is used to spread his ideology. <clears throat> the Turkish government has a specific directorate called the President's of Religious Affairs. Not only that, he's arresting journalists to critique him. Narcissistic injury. You critique these people, they're going to enrage. Classic narcissism. To oversee all the religious and cultural organisations that Turkey sponsors. Although the DNA is supposed to be neutral, it has increasingly acted as an arm of the Erdogan regime. The US based headquarters of the DNA is a mosque in Lanham, Maryland. 
and it does business as the Turkish American Community Center. They build many buildings under the guise of religious centers. Its website openly acknowledges the DNA in Turkey funds the center and appoints administrative and religious staff. It boasts of having completed ten hundred and ten million dollars expansion into a small village in Maryland. Its most recent nine ninety lists over eighty six million dollars in net assets. DNA has at least twenty nine branches in the US according to its website. As the Middle East Forum's focus on Western Islamism points out, the DNA in America is known to promote extremists. <clears throat> Two US-based extremist preachers, you remember Cat Stevens? We had joy, we had fun, we had seasons in the sun, who turned Islamic. <clears throat> well, according to this article, turned extremist, were given awards by Erdogan at a DNA event in Turkey. The admiration is mutual, as Wahad just said, he loves Erdogan, suggested that Turkey lead the Muslim world. Where is the centre focus of the Gog armies, you guys? It's Turkish. Where did Jesus say the seat of Satan is in the book of Revelation? Pergamum, in Turkey. Wahaj has a long history of anti-American theocratic rhetoric. Anyhow, Turkish network. Despite its tie to the Turkish government and its failure to register as a foreign agent, it seems legally required to do so. The US Department of Homeland Security awarded two non-profit security grants for that much money, almost $150,000, to the DNA Center of America. So what we're seeing in the US is a self-demolition job. We are self-demolishing the US of A. Whoever's running this place, and it's not the Jews, because it goes against everything they would hope and dream for, is coming from the Islamic world. You understand? I've got to move on. I have this website here for you to check out. Let me refresh it. The religion of peace dot com to find out the latest wonderful attacks of the Islamic world has done across the world and it gives you statistics. <clears throat> so on this week alone, twenty seven attacks, fifty six killed, injured one hundred and one, suicide blast this week, none at the moment. Countries in eleven countries. Islamic terrorists have carried out more than 44,000 deadly terror attacks since 9-11. Religion of Peace. Religionofpeace.com This is why. <clears throat> Remember that Islamic scripture I showed to you. From their own website, sunnah.org. That Islam teaches an end time paradigm where the Muslims will kill the Jews. I showed you that, right? So you've got this religious hatred against the Jews. It doesn't matter how they word it, how they dress it up, how they politicize it. It's an anti-Jewish movement. Mein Kampf in Gaza and beyond, a bestseller in the PA areas. Hitler's vile book is a guide studied by Hamas terrorists. Does that make sense now? <clears throat> it wasn't just Hamas. When you look at the videos, the screenshots, the evidence, you know, my goodness, do we have such a thing anymore? You see Palestinian civilians coming in with the terrorists. They're all one, you guys. There's a tiny, tiny percentage of Christians who are stuck in Gaza putting up with this nightmare.
Mm, my throat's getting funny now. I don't think I can talk much longer. I'm just, I'm heartbroken. I'm finding it hard to even do this today. How my my siblings have behaved with me, it's, it's hurt me so deeply. It's like I've got something lodged in my chest, in my heart, that I can't remove. I don't know if I'll recover from the pain. But I know what Jesus said, and I'm always reminded of the Gospels, and what the Lord said would be the price that we pay to follow him and to stand up for the truth. I'm mindful of that. So if you keep me in your prayers, I greatly appreciate it. Gaza Palestinians also engaged in public desecration of victims' bodies. Do you understand this? If they did it there... Let me turn the mic toward me. If they did this there, they will do it in the West. Are you listening? And I'm telling you now, our governments are barely going to do anything to stop it. And they know that. They know it. This is why they've been spending billions of dollars brainwashing the youth. And on top of that, you've got China brainwashing the Western youth as well through TikTok. Gaza Palestinians, civilians, also engaged in public desecration of victims' bodies. In parallel, Thousands of rockets were fired at Israeli population centres, sending millions to shelters. To shelters, This is resistance by any means necessary, according to them. Every one of these acts constitute a blatant violation of international, humanitarian and human rights laws. But we know all about that, don't we? <clears throat> Campus reform by any means necessary. Unbelievable. Listen to these students charting pro Hamas slogans at campus rally. Well, now we know where the money came from to indoctrinate them. How slowly they've been educated to believe this Marxist, <clears throat> excuse me. This Marxist narrative, the oppressor and the oppressed narrative, simplifying world dynamic just simply on that basis. And they've taken the bait. Stumbled upon a protest today at the UW Madison campus, gross chance, including glory to the murders. They believe the only good Jew is a dead Jew. This hasn't happened in a vacuum, you guys. Wake up. Glory to the murders! Glory to the murders! Do you know what you're saying when we say? We will liberate the land! There you go. We will liberate the land by any means necessary. We will liberate the land! By any means necessary! So disgusting. Absolutely shameful. <clears throat> disgusting let me close that window down so this is what we're dealing with on top of all of this on top of all of that there's more good news washington examiner illegal immigrants from middle east arrested at u.s border over past 10 days this was in october the 13th <clears throat> why are they coming here you guys and it's not women and kids it's men Military age men, illegal immigrants have been caught from the Middle East, have been caught and arrested <clears throat> by border patrol agents on the US-Mexico border since the start of the month. A cause for concern in light of the Hamas terror attack in Israel. Something tells me that this is a plot in the making. And so many of us saw this coming were concerned, tried to raise the alarm and were silenced for being racist. Where's your compassion? They're fleeing their war-torn countries to find refuge in the US, really.
How people were traveling through sometimes more than a dozen countries to get to the US and were alarmed <clears throat> by the number of people coming into the country, particularly those who could not be chased down. Since the 1st of October, border control agents have apprehended individuals from Afghanistan, Algeria, Afghanistanis, Afghanis are being kicked out of many countries in the Middle East, including Pakistan, I believe also in Iran. Well, no one's worried about them. Algeria, Bahrain, Bangladesh, Egypt, Indonesia, Iran, Iraq, Jordan, Kazakhstan, Kuwait, Lebanon, Libya, Malaysia, Morocco, North Korea, Oman, Pakistan, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Somalia, Sudan. What do all these countries have in common? Tajikistan, Tunisia, Turkey, Azerbaijan, you mean? This is in just the last 10 days. Concern over the threat of terrorism has grown since this weakened terrorist attack in Israel by Hamas terrorists who killed more than a thousand Israelis as well as raped, tortured and beheaded women and infants during the long hours attack. Along with the deaths in Gaza, the toll is at least 1,800 lives lost, including 11 Americans. <clears throat> I'm very concerned about potential sleeper cells, which is what many of us have been warning us about, if you're listening, if you're paying any attention. They're looking at our churches, the synagogues that have nobody there, no security there. They can just walk in and do what they want to do. You don't think that's going to happen here, you guys. You don't understand the beast. <clears throat> People think our governments are going to be there to protect us. What, well, just like how the police are protecting pro-Hamas protests in Britain. They know they're outnumbered. I'm concerned about potential sleeper cells that can be coming across our southern border. One moment. I asked border patrol agents how Syrian, how Lebanese, how Middle Eastern country citizens can come in. And they told me they fly first and foremost to an airport in the Middle East. Could be Saudi Arabia, could be in Dubai. And then from there, they take a flight to Colombia. Then from Colombia, they're taking a trip, oftentimes by bus, across Central America, across Mexico, to our southern border. Four men from Syria were arrested during his visit to McAllen, Texas, whom he stopped by to see during a visit. How much did it cost you to come across the border? He said $4,000. He paid a Mexican cartel $4,000 to get him across the border. And now he's got his flight up to Boston, a guy who just come across the border within the last day. There were two Venezuelans with similar stories, $3,000, $4,000 to Mexican cartels. More than 10,000 illegal immigrants from special interest countries, Afghanistan, Egypt, Iran and Syria, had been arrested at the border between 2021 in two years. 10,000. I'm going to read some scriptures. I have to get to the word of God. I've been going for over an hour. <clears throat> I'm going to end with this scripture and my and the beginning of the third video in this series that I'm going to do. I'm going to pick up from here. Why am I reading this scripture? I'm going to read this to show you how Christians who are anti-Jew, anti-Israel, how they read the Bible to justify God has done away with Israel. He has no need of the Jews. They rejected him. They're an abominable people. He has the church now. This is how the Islamists, jihadists, 
interpret God in the Bible and the Jews? Do you understand what I'm saying? Israel rejected God. They rejected his way, so he'd done away with them. But he also gave them the land of Israel, according to the Quran. They're justifying and explaining how jihad is warranted. Jihad is warranted against Israel. And they're getting Christians. Hold on. They, they're preying on Christians. These Islamists, let me repeat that. These Islamists, jihadists, are preying on Christians who don't know their word, don't know the Bible, to turn against Israel, to turn from supporting the Jews. How are they going to do that? Number one, they're going to start talking about, don't you know, the Talmud says all this stuff about Jesus and Mary. Don't you know that in your own Bible, God has done away with Israel? Didn't you know that these are the people who rejected your Jesus? This is how they're going to call for Christians to abandon their love, their support, the solidarity that they show for Israel to abandon it. And I believe this is a part of, it could be, the great falling away, you guys. The great apostasy that's going to take place before the man of lawlessness is revealed. So preachers like Chuck Baldwin, this is how they read the Bible. Filthy, anti-Jewish preachers out there. Thank you, Martin Luther. The Protestant Reformation. Just think about that. Protestant. What are you protesting? These people are lost, friends. They don't understand the counsel of God. They don't understand when you read a portion of the prophets, you read it in its context. So I'm going to end the video by reading this. And I want to show you how Chuck Baldwin and the likes of Rick Wiles and all those other Richard Medhursts of this world who call themselves Christians but are actually apostates, how they read the Bible. Here we go. Are you ready? Zephaniah chapter 3. The wickedness of Israel, of Jerusalem. Another thing I want to mention. In the old King James Version, in the Bible, there's so many things I want to talk to you about, friends. Oh my goodness. There are some versions in translations in the Bible, because of the indoctrination and because of their view of Israel and the Jews, talking about the translators, when they insert headings, you'll find in some of these older translations, all the blessings that are promised to Israel, the headings will say the church. Check your Bibles. Make sure they don't have that error in there either. <clears throat> Woe to her who is rebellious and polluted. There's so much, so much important information I have to share with you. Woe to her who is rebellious and polluted. This is Zephaniah, prophet of God, declaring judgment on Israel, on Jerusalem specifically. This is how they read it. They'll read all of this, right? To the oppressing city, she has not obeyed his voice. She has not received correction. She has not trusted in the Lord. She has not drawn near to her God, right? Her princes in her midst are roaring lions. Her judges are evening wolves that leave not a bone till morning. I mean, I've heard some pretty terrible things said about the Jews, right? <clears throat> really bad things. 
insulting words, accusations, allegations, what have you. But none of them trump what the prophets had to say regarding these people. So what I hear today at these anti-Jewish protests and the hateful bunch, it doesn't surprise me. The word of the Lord has declared some really, really harsh judgments against the people. But it doesn't end there. The story continues. And it's that story that I want to share with you. Her princes in her midst are royal lions. Her judges are evening wolves. They leave not a bird in morning. Her prophets are insolent. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm getting tired of talking. Her prophets are insolent, treacherous people. Her priests have polluted the sanctuary. They have done violence to the law. The Lord is righteous in their midst. He will do no unrighteousness. Every morning he brings his justice to light. He never fails, but the unjust knows no shame. What was God's problem? His people were unjust. They were unfaithful. So these apostate preachers, they read these verses from the same book. Right. I have cut off nations, their fortresses are devastated. I have made their streets desolate, with none passing by. Scathing rebukes, judgments, don't you say? Their cities are destroyed. There is no one, no inhabitant. I said, surely you will fear me. You will receive instruction, so that her dwelling would not be cut off, despite everything for which I punished her. But they rose early and corrupted all their deeds. And then that's it. They'll read all that. The wickedness of Jerusalem. See? You see that? They don't read the rest. God hasn't finished. He's still talking. Therefore wait for me, says the Lord. Until the day I rise up for plunder, my determination is to gather the nations. He's determined to do this. He has a plan. You see, in God's administration, he's always mindful of the bigger picture. What we just read from is not the end of the story. My determination is to gather the nations. To my assembly of kingdoms. The nations. To pour on them. Who? The nations. My indignation. All my fierce anger. All the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. <clears throat> For then I will restore to the peoples a pure language that they may call on the name of the Lord to serve him with one accord from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my worshippers, the daughter of my dispersed ones, shall bring my offering. In that day you shall not be shamed of any, for any of your deeds, in which you transgress against me. How come? For then I will take away from your midst those who rejoice in your pride, and you shall no longer be haughty in my holy mountain. I will leave in your midst <clears throat> a meek, and humble people and they shall trust in the name of the Lord the remnant of Israel shall do no unrighteousness and speak no lies nor shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth for they shall feed their flocks and lie down and no one shall make them afraid he's still not finished the God of Israel has continued to speak 
seeing a daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. Something marvellous is happening here, friends. The Lord has taken away your judgments. He has cast out your enemy. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. And when the Lord, the King of Israel, is in your midst, you can be guaranteed assured this is Jesus when his presence will be known in the land. Ye shall see disaster no more. In that day it shall be said, Wow, the Lord is still talking. Huh. <clears throat> In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear. Zion. He's talking to Jerusalem, but he's also referencing Zion. It's one and the same. Let not your hands be weak. <clears throat> the Lord your God in your midst not just in the dwelling in the heavens now he's in your midst the mighty one will save who's the savior it's jesus he will rejoice over you with gladness so let's just pause there at the beginning we had the scathing rebukes of judgment rebellious polluted the oppressing city she has not obeyed his voice. She has not received correction. She has not trusted in the Lord. She has not drawn near to her God. And so the judgments came. It's called consequences, yes? You understand? <clears throat> he will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. I will gather those who sorrow over the appointed assembly who are among you, to whom its reproach is a burden. Behold, at that time I will deal I will deal with all who afflict you. I will save the lame and gather those who were driven out. I will appoint them for praise and fame. Did you hear that? Did you hear that and did you read that? These are the portions of the same context in the same chapter that these apostate preachers conveniently forget to read. Chuck Baldwin, Rick Wiles, apparently they're, they're preachers. My God, have mercy on your soul. In every land where they were put to shame, you see this? The one who's going to be dwelling in their midst he says, Behold at that time, I will deal with all with all who afflict you. I will save the lame and gather those who were driven out. I will appoint them for praise and fame in every land where they were put to shame. But Sonia, didn't you know the land of Israel, the state of Israel is not God's people? How can you say that God is a Zionist? Oh, I'm ashamed of you. All those who were incensed and ashamed <clears throat> at Israel will be ashamed before the living God when he comes and dwells in their midst. Those people will be put to shame. Among all the peoples of the earth, among all the peoples of the earth, God is going to put these people fame and praise when i return your captives before your eyes says the lord so my darling friends this is how you read the bible you don't pick verses and base your whole theory on it <clears throat> you read it in its context especially when the whole chapter is the lord speaking From this moment on, I'm going to continue my third message and I have so much to share. It's going to be talking about the Dajjal. 
the dragon, the beast, false prophet, these three entities and how the Islamic world fulfills all of them. I'll end the video, post this as soon as I can. You see, the promise is that he who scattered Israel, friends, is going to gather him. Israel is going to be regathered in the land. Guaranteed. doesn't matter what these pro-Hamas jihadists are saying right now, friends. I'm going to show you evidence how this is going to happen. You see, these Islamists who really believe in the Islamic end times believe that Dajjal, who is the Antichrist for Muslims, is going to be a Jew. They already know. They know Jesus is coming back. <clears throat> Look at their artwork. They depict him as a Jew. They make allegations that, oh no, the Jews are going to accept the Antichrist, Dajjal. Jewish man is saying, be ready for Dajjal. These people are vile anti-Jewish haters and these are the people of the beast. You and I are the people of the book, the Holy Bible, and these people are the people of the beast. These are Islamic videos, do you understand? Islamic videos pointing to the Jews who are looking for their Messiah. Do you blame them? We've got to understand something. Blindness in part, has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in, which is you and me, right? Remember, the first disciples, the very first believers of Jesus were Jews. <clears throat> Let me remind you. Verse 25, Romans 11. I'm going on, I know, because there's so much to say. For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion, you apostate bunch of Jew haters, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And when that time has been fulfilled... All Israel will be saved. As it is written, the Deliverer will come out of Zion and he will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. Yeah, I'm going to be talking a lot more about this in my next video. You don't want to miss it. Okay, some of it might be repetitive. Some of it is going to shed a new light on this perspective that Islam is wholly and entirely the vehicle in which the Antichrist, the man of sin and the false prophet are going to come from. They're coming from the Islamic world. I'll be back again soon. Lots of love.